So my thoughts on the anime are kind of controversial in a way. I posted some of what I was thinking about the anime to the Reddit and I got downloaded pretty hard. So uh, yeah, this might not be what most people want to hear, but I, you might want to hear this. First off though, the reason I'm not going to use anything from the actual anime, like no still images, not even from promotional material, is because I had so many other videos that did that, where it was just still images, promotional material, and I got hard copyright struck, and I mean, the kind of copyright strike where three of those delete your channel immediately. I got two of those. So I'm not going to take the chances, even though I was able to fight those on grounds of uh, fair use. But I'm just not going to take the chance, okay? I'm just not going to take the chance of accidentally losing my channel over some random bullshit. So, what did I actually think about the anime? Now to stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the anime. Here's the thing, I actually kind of liked it. I actually kind of thought that it was pretty alright. Okay, now before I continue on, I, I know it wasn't perfect. If I was to give it a rating, it would still be at most an 8.5 out of 10. At most. Uh, if, I, if I have a good day. If I have a bad day, I might put it down to like 6 out of 10 uh, at worst. So we're still having plenty of problems to deal with, okay? But here's the reason why I actually kind of was alright with the ending. Uh, and this basically comes from someone who, when I read the f story for the very first time, when it originally uh, appeared and released on the Japanese uh, Mac Record server, I was there from release of Japanese all the way until now. So I've been playing for like five years uh, this game. And when I was there, I was reading through the story together with other people who, uh, who were on the Japanese server who were just reading from uh, translations, basically, that uh, people were... Like, people in the community made translations, as people are doing nowadays, but it was different people back, th uh, back then. We were doing translations, trying to figure out what actually is going on in the story. And the thing is, uh, when we first read those translations of the story and we saw what was happening, what was going on, a lot of people were really sad, especially uh, at chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 10, uh, 9, not that much stuff actually happened, but most people were really, really angry at the story with chapter 8 and chapter 10 because that's where the biggest dips in writing quality was in arc 1. So a lot of people that I was uh, friends with back then, they sort of left the server, they, they joined some other server that I'm also part of, so I was actually still able to get their opinions now many years later. Uh, but basically a lot of people were really angry about the story, many people left. Then, sometime after that, the North American server launched, and with the North American server got a lot more people interested, uh, and specifically a Western, uh, uh, mostly North American audience. A lot of those people uh, I got also very friendly with, of course, because I'm friends with everybody, right? I, I want to be friends with everybody. But the point is um, that I got more different opinions about the game, and the different opinions that I got were, well, there were also still many people who really didn't like the, the story, and also kind of left after some time. But now, the people who are still currently part of the Magia Record community as a whole in the West are mostly people who were all right with what the game did, which is, I want to mention this, totally fine. Like, I'm gonna say some bad stuff about the game's story, but I want to mention this, if I preface this right away, there's absolutely no problem with lacking the story. I like many parts of the Arc 1 story, okay? Not all of it, specifically not the later parts of it, but I do still like a lot of the uh, game's story, and if I were to rewrite the entirety of the game's story, which I fantasized about a lot already, I made many different plans, but I'm not actually gonna do it because it's way too much work, but most of the things that I would actually, like, copy-paste from what is currently in the game, which is mostly the earlier chapters, which I think were totally fine. It's mostly the later chapters that I think I would rewrite. Okay, so give you some background on what my opinions are, what some of my friends' opinions were, and what the opinions of the current Mago Record uh, community are, especially because survivor bias. You're not gonna hear from data, in this case people, who are no longer part of the community. The people that most strongly disliked and hated the game's story are no longer here to tell their story, to talk about what they think about the anime. Okay, now all of that was prefaced, basically, uh, now explaining why I actually kind of like the anime. Well, uh, and here's the main reason why. So the original game story, uh, the main reason why I and many others at the time, actually almost basically everyone at the time when it came out, uh, hated the game story was because there was basically there were basically no consequences for any character there were many characters that have done some terrible absolutely terrible things and by the way i'm going to spoil both the game story and what happened in the anime because i'm not going to be able to talk about this without spoiling everything that happens in the anime and in the game story up until arc one ending 
Basically, all of characters did some really terrible things. Toka did some absolutely horrendous things. So did Nemu, although to a lesser degree, a way lesser degree. And Mifuyu did some really terrible things. She basically gaslit uh, Mita, uh, not Mita, um, Yachio. She tried to sort of like she kind of tried to kidnap Yachio. Basically, the the entire rumor of the, um, the the shrine rumor, the Seon shrine rumor, was created specifically on Mifuyu's orders, specifically to trap Yachio, which was a pretty terrible thing to do, by the way. And, and all the other things that she did. I'm not gonna go into the details here of every, absolutely everything, but many characters did many bad things. They were trying to sort of take uh, responsibility for what happened. And all of these characters, either you would think, okay, they have many death flags on them, they did some bad things, and they're trying to take responsibility, so we were expecting some deaths, right? And not many deaths actually happened, which, also, I need to mention this, is also fine. The fact that no one died at the end of Arc 1 was still fine in itself if it was actually... If it actually made sense, right? If they were actually given reasons why. But when we have stuff like Mifuyu's soul gem cracks and then Iroha just remembers that she can heal soul gems, a lot of people were like, oh, that's some ass pulls right there. A lot of people really felt like uh, Arc 1 endings had multiple ass pulls, like Nemu basically saying, I'm gonna sacrifice my soul to right the wrongs I've done. And then she's fine. I mean, she's in a wheelchair, but she's alive at the end of that. Ui also is just alive even though how how is we alive and then mokyu's mokyu kills itself and here's the thing the story doesn't act doesn't actually give a reason why mokyu come back comes back this mokyu just comes back and then the story just says oh well i guess since you really since people really wanted it here he's just back the story just doesn't give a reason so there were many different fake out deaths and at the end of arc one that really had no way of actually surviving. A lot of people really didn't like that. Like, where are the consequences for these characters? After that as well, with the trials that Sakurako puts on for, uh, for Toka and Nemu, they also basically get, scot get off scot-free. They get a bracelet that uh, kills them if they try to transform. But the thing is, everything that they did doesn't require them to transform. Like, even without transforming, they're still just as big as a threat to everyone as they were before. Which also shows right afterwards, because they continue being just as effective as what they're doing as they were before. So, that did fuck all. So, yeah, a lot of people really uh, not quite that... A lot of people were angry, right? A lot of people were angry at the story. So, many people leave the entire community because of that. They're just gone. They're no longer part of the community. And now, here comes the anime. The anime season 1 season 2, we're not gonna talk about that. But then here comes the finale. And... The finale actually kills off characters. And once again, just the act of killing itself doesn't really mean anything, okay? But how does it kill these characters? I'm gonna say one thing. There's problems here. There's definite problems here, okay? But at least some of these deaths seem like, yeah, I can, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. I can kind of see how Kurue was probably not going to make it out alive because she was basically trying to get herself killed in almost every single scene that she was in. She was doing some really dumb shit that was just going, that was definitely going to lead to end, her, uh, end up her being killed. Um, definitely not doing anything that would try to keep herself alive. Uh, me for you, you can see does similar stuff to in the anime where she does uh, in the game where she does some really terrible things, and then later on says, "Okay, now I'm going to take responsibility for all the bad things I've done. I'm going to make it right." Which basically death flags upon death flags, like yeah, she's going to die. Okay, she put her, she put like thousands of thousands of death flags onto her forehead that she's definitely going to die. Okay, that makes sense. Toka and Nemo, they basically wanted to sacrifice themselves to Eve anyway, so one way or another, they already were going to get themselves killed just on purpose anyway okay so it also makes sense that they're not gonna make it our life we there was basically never any plan to actually get her out alive and this is something that i think people kind of forget about the game there was never any plan on how exactly they're going to save ui okay they just like okay we finally figured out ui is in eve and that eve is basically her witch but at no point does anyone go okay but how do we actually like physically get her out of there? How do we physically try and restore her body and her soul? And none of the, there was like absolutely no thought. We were just like, okay, whatever. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go and it's just gonna work out. And it just worked out. In the anime, they have absolutely no fucking plan how to save Ui and they end up not saving Ui because of course they don't. So that also makes sense. Alina, 
yeah, she was the super duper big evil guy, even though I kind of hate how they did that because, you know, Aina needed a lot more screen time. Aina is one of my most favorite characters in the entirety of Magarica, but at this point, I've seen her get mistreated by the writers so many times. She's such an amazing character in her MSS, in uh, Kylie Adams MSS, in the uh, Halloween event. In these early uh, stories, she's such an amazing character, and then she just gets continually mistreated ever since then. And I've just gotten, I've just sort of gotten used to that, that Aina is just not gonna ever have any good story to her, whatever, whatsoever, because the writers just don't give a shit. The writers just want some one-sided bad guy, they're like, whatever, Aina, you, Aina, go ahead and just be evil. I don't know if it, I don't care how much or how little sense it does with your character, just does it, okay? Just do it, okay? And she just does it, okay? And that's, whatever, whatever. So I was also kind of okay with Aina dying, but like I said, it was really underdeveloped and you really needed a lot more screen time. But the thing is, all of that screen time argument also comes from the fact that there just weren't more episodes. There were so many characters in this story that needed more time that we just needed more episodes in total to actually make sure to get all this time. Like, yeah, you can sit down and say, actually, Toka and Nemo, they need more time. Oh, and uh, you know, she needed more time. Oh, you need, she needed more time. Couldn't you need more time? But here's the thing. How are you going to get that time within 24 episodes? Where's that time coming from? Uh, where's it coming from? I don't. How, how is 24 episodes enough to give all of these characters a deep uh, character development arc and arc? It's it's not gonna happen, okay? So you just needed more episodes. This is the first thing we're gonna tell say about the anime. We just needed more episodes. Uh, so since we don't have more episodes, yes, there are gonna be many characters who just didn't give and get a, get enough time. But it's kind of a non-argument. To keep bringing that up because like I said they needed more uh, episodes but they didn't get more episodes so if if a, if a creator of the anime is watching this review they're gonna be like yeah we need more episodes but what could we do we didn't get more episodes right this is not the kind of critique that actually helps anyone that you no one is helped by you saying we needed more episodes because yeah of course they know they needed more episodes they know they didn't uh, they know they know they needed more episodes but they didn't get it okay so yeah it's not helping anyone but yeah, to continue on, all of these deaths kind of are at least reasonable, or they make sense, uh, or they were at least uh, shown to be happening in the future with death flags. Except for Momoko, why? Why did Momoko die? This is, this is the one death that I was really upset about. That I was not just upset, that I was actually really sad about. And it's kind of, it actually got to me, I'm gonna be honest. It actually really emotionally got to me that Momoko died. Because she's the goodest girl in the entire story. If you had like a scale on how good a character is in terms of pure like uh, moral goodness, Momoko is like at the top of that. Iroha does more questionable things than Momoko. She's like the goodest girl. And she, but on top of that, you could say like, okay, but in Marika Maika, like good characters always have like some sort of flaw that ends up getting them killed, like Sayaka or Mami. But she doesn't even, she didn't even have. Uh, like, some terrible flaw that ended up getting herself killed. The writers just decided that she needed to die, and that is just... <sighs> I'm just really sad about that, okay? Okay? The, all of the other characters, I can totally see them actually dying, but Momoko... That was just unfair. That was just not fair. No death flags, no reasoning. That was That was just not good. Okay, not just because I like Momoko, I mean, I like Aina more than Momoko, but for Aina, I kind of see that, it, okay, it made sense. Momoko, that absolutely made no fucking sense. So that, that kind of made me sad. Paru didn't take it good at all. If you don't know who Paru is, forget about that. But moving on. This kind of made a lot of people think, and not just the Momoko part of Momoko dying, but a lot of people dying, when in the game, no one died, not even a single character died. That made a lot of people think, are they just doing this just to be evil? Just to have some despair and suffering in the story because, oh, the original Maraka Maika did it. But I think they're actually going more so on the, I must say with they, I mean mostly the director, uh, Doro Ino. Uh, Doro Ino mostly went on the original sort of outline that the story had. So originally, there was actually an outline for the story that later, and I say with later, I mean just before the game was supposed to release, was rewritten completely. They really completely had to rewrite the story and uh, delay the game. So they delayed the game for multiple months while citing a rewrite uh, of the story. Uh, I've made an entire video about why we know that the rewrite happened. I gave many, many different uh, uh, arguments that 
are basically incontrovertible, so we know that the rewrite did happen. We have direct confirmation from Papa, the guy who draws Market Apple, that the rewrite did happen. Uh, if you want to look for the video, it's on my channel. It's called, I think, Before the Rewrite. So if you look at Before the Rewrite, the market record uh, story, you'll see uh, that one. So yeah, we know the rewrite happened, and I think in the original outline, we can see from some of the promotional material, there was promotional material that showed Momoko's witch barrier, which makes a lot of people think that, okay, Momoko was supposed to die in the original outline. Probably Mifuyu was supposed to die, probably Aina was supposed to die. Like, I mean, if, if we already know that some characters were supposed to die in the original outline, it's probable that, for example, Toka and Imo were probably not going to make it out alive if we know that the original outline had multiple character deaths as soon as Momoko, who, who probably in the original outline would have died in, like, chapter 3 or whatever. Uh, because the promotional material only went up to like chapter 3 or 4, so pretty early on Momoko was supposed to die by witching out, uh, or... I don't, I don't, we don't know exactly how it was supposed to happen, but at least by witching out in some capacity or another. So bringing all that, that together, Doro Ino was very closely linked with the game's development and with the game's story, because Doro Ino did write some little bits here and there, but also Doro Inu made every single doppel and witch and their background in the game. So every single blurb that you read about the, the, the witch descriptions, they're all written by Doro Inu. Every single doppel design, at least until recently, was all de uh, designed by Doro Inu. So Doro Inu knows everything that's going on uh, and knew the entire outline of the story before the rewrite. So now with Doro Inu directing this, and also with Doro Inu in re interviews after the game came out, basically hinting that he hates the fucking story uh, of what the game actually did. Like, he basically said right to the camera in interviews, like, I, I actually kind of hate the story. I actually kind of don't like the game's story. So I think that Doro Inu basically took this opportunity of incorporating some aspects, not like actually the entire thing, but incorporating some aspects of what the story was before the rewrite and working them into the anime, which includes Momoko dying. But the thing is, in neither the game nor the anime does it actually make sense now after the rewrite for Momoko to die, so kind of missed that mark. And also, like I said, all these other characters that ended up dead needed more screen time. So he wanted to get these characters killed because he liked the original uh, outline more. And also I like the original outline more because it seemed like more mature of a story. But he couldn't really fit that in well enough in 24 episodes, so uh, I don't know, he just he just waved his hands and got some of them killed. But to bring it all back now on why I actually ended up liking it is because ultimately I think it actually just makes more sense for everything that happened is for there to be consequences. In the original game story version, like I said, many people were angry that sort of a lot of the character deaths that should have happened were sort of hand hand waved away, like, oh, this character survives because Miroa can heal soul gems. Fuck it, she can just do that. Ui survives uh, even though there's no plan to save her, um, like, no concrete plan, because I don't fucking know, she just survives, whatever. Alina, uh, she gets amnesia and survives, because fuck it, why not? Nemu tries to kill herself, but uh, I, guess, I guess she just survives as well. Like, all of the, all, none of this stuff actually made any fucking sense why there were no consequences for any of these characters except Nemu ended up ending up in a wheelchair, which, by the way, for her being the only character that ended up suffering consequences, she was more of one of the more good characters in the end, because Nemu, read her backstory, read her MSS, read all the other events that she's in. She's actually a pretty good character. The uh, main story version of her made no fucking sense. Anyway, point is, uh, many people felt like the uh, game story version just didn't have any good consequences for the actions the characters took. And then the anime kind of goes the other direction, but maybe a bit too far. Maybe a bit too far. You're like, okay, you want, you want consequences? Here's consequences, and we get consequences. But then we also get some characters that don't really make much sense, mostly Momoko, uh, because I guess they were just supposed to die and we didn't have enough time. So yeah, that's basically probably all my thoughts surrounding the anime's finale, all put into one in that I'm actually really happy that we got some of the, uh, the consequences that characters were supposed to have in the original version of the story because before the rewrite that was made, that was making the game more like happy, I guess I would say that gave the game more of a happy end. But I also can see why a lot of people that liked the happy ending are now really angry about the story, suddenly not having a happy ending. 
All of that said, I also still kind of agree that you could kind of construe this entire thing, especially with the very last scene that happens before the uh, before like the end uh, rolls. That maybe maybe this is supposed to be a sort of sequel, or, or not a sequel, a prequel to the anime uh, to the game, with the game being the sequel to the anime that way around. So with the game being a sequel to the anime and the the anime sort of being a failed timeline uh, and after this failed timeline, we get uh, a new timeline that then is the game timeline that actually happens to succeed. I I kind of can get behind that because the ga the anime ending, this last shot of Marokami and everything, does kind of imply something similar. It doesn't directly imply that in any way, but it's a headcanon that you can reasonably make and it would work out, okay? So you can have that headcanon. Um, in there. Overall, yeah, the anime had a lot of problems, okay? The anime had a lot of problems. But I still like the fact that they actually gave us a version of the story where if you do dumb shit, you get smacked in the face, right? There actually is consequence for your action. I did like that part. They just didn't develop it well enough and we probably need a lot more time. I don't think, though, that Shaft would have been able to make more episodes because it took them like a year to make four episodes. And with season two, they took an entire year to make eight episodes and only four of those were finished. The other four were not finished in any way whatsoever. So I don't think we would have been even been able to make 12 more episodes in less than five years. That was that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe button, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys next time.